Since its debut in the mid-2000s, ZBrush was seen as a genius 3D software that blessed the CG industry like VFX and game development with its brilliant tools and features, and continued to be the only industry 3D software in sculpting till today. The thing is, we have seen many other 3D software over the years, like Mudbox, 3D Code, and Blender. But why not any one of them is considered a true rival, especially among professionals and studios? To be honest, one of its rivals in the industry in the mid-2000s and late 2000s had a much better sculpting experience and was regularly updated with newer and better features that ZBrush didn't get till years later. So how come ZBrush is the king of 3D sculpting and other software are just an alternative? ZBrush began as a vision of the mind of O4 Alon, to merge the worlds of 2D and 3D in one medium, which I think was an ambitious idea for the time. This led to the creation of Pixels, which embodied both pixels and voxel attributes, allowing artists to paint with a depth dimension on a 2D canvas. Pixelogic introduced ZBrush to the world at SIGGRAPH 1999 showcasing its unique approach to digital art and sculpting specifically. This was a time when 3D graphics and digital art were rapidly evolving. You can think of this period as the big bang of 3D software, and ZBrush's debut was particularly noteworthy. The software blended 2D and 3D techniques in a way that was unprecedented at the time, which allowed artists to create detailed, textured 3D models with a level of ease and flexibility that was not previously available. And this offered a glimpse into the future of digital sculpting and texturing, showcasing the potential for a more intuitive and natural art process compared to traditional 3D modeling, which we all know. This appearance helped to establish ZBrush as a pioneer in 3D sculpting, and as ZBrush's capabilities expanded, especially after 2003, it quickly gained popularity in the entertainment industry, particularly among game developers and filmmakers, which they really need, especially for creating highly detailed and complex 3D models and characters such as animals, monsters, and different kinds of organic stuff. So, its ability to handle high-resolution models and intricate details made it a great tool for creating complex characters and environments. This continued to be the case in the mid-2000s, and ZBrush introduced new and several features that would become industry standard, tools like Z-Spheres and creating base meshes, and the introduction of subdivision surface modeling, which allowed artists to create highly detailed models more efficiently. Around the same time in the mid to late 2000s, Mudbox developed by SkyMatter entered the market in 2007. Although it came later compared to ZBrush, Mudbox was quickly recognized for its user-friendly interface, which was seen as more approachable for beginners and those transitioning from traditional sculpting or other 3D software. Because if there is anything that made people interested in Mudbox is its intuitive interface and workflow as opposed to ZBrush, which is the farthest software from being called intuitive. You can literally learn the interface and forget it the next month if you don't use it long enough. The interesting thing about Mudbox is that its development was driven by professional artists in the film and game development industry, and the creation of Mudbox specifically by SkyMatter was primarily driven by the need for a more efficient sculpting tool for use in production of the 2005 film King Kong and this practical implementation in a real production helped Mudbox to closely align with the practical needs of its users. The competition between these two software was insane. ZBrush, with its early start, had a more established user base and was known for its depth and complexity. Now, let me take a moment and tell you about Skillshare, one of the largest learning communities on the web with a massive and ever-growing library of basically anything you want to delve into. Skillshare offers classes on a wide variety of topics, including illustration, graphic design, photography, UI and UX design, and much more. This year is around the corner, and the holiday season is upon us, which is a perfect time to pick up a new skill, especially as an artist, or maybe a new side hustle. So if, for example, you want to start learning Blender, Houdini, 3ds Max, Maya, ZBrush, or Unreal, I recommend Next.Classes. 
If you want to get started with Blender, I recommend this introduction class that spans over 18 hours. And if you want to delve into sculpting using ZBrush, there is this Dynamic Male Anatomy class which is very helpful. And if you want to learn Maya and Substance, this class called Low Poly Character Making might be useful for you. So click the first link in the description and join a class for free. And the first 500 people to use the link will get a 1 month free trial of Skillshare. Mudbox, on the other hand, was often praised for a streamlined workflow and it was perceived as a more focused and less intimidating for newcomers as we said, which helped it gain traction quickly. In addition, Mudbox had a 64-bit memory access years before ZBrush. This, in addition to PTAX, the texture painted technology of Disney Animation Studios. Also, we can mention displacement maps that Mudbox implemented earlier. But it also goes without saying that ZBrush was also better than Mudbox in many areas. But both tools had significant impacts on the industry. Now, you might say, what about other sculpting software? Interestingly enough, 3D Coat was released in 2007 and 3D Sculpting was added to Blender in the same year. So Mudbox, 3D Coat, and Blender all became 3D Sculpting software at the same time, with the exception that Blender was not solely dedicated to sculpting and the fact that 3D Coat introduced 3D Sculpting later. Now, when it comes to Blender, back then, as an open source 3D modeling and animation software, Blender was just beginning to explore the realm of digital sculpting. The tools available for sculpting were basic, offering a modest set of brushes and options for shaping and texturing 3D models, and the level of detail achievable was significantly lower than the current technology allows. I mean what Blender is capable of today in version 4 and beyond. So advanced sculpting features which are now standard in digital sculpting software like dynamic topology, complex brush dynamics, and advanced masking were not part of Blender's repertoire, especially in the early days, or even the few years that followed. These limitations meant that artists working with Blender had to be more creative and resourceful in achieving their desired results, or taking the other route of using other powerful sculpting software such as ZBrush or Mudbox. Another 3D software that emerged around the same time was 3D Code. It was originally known as 3D Brush and its primary focus was on texturing 3D models if you have been around in 3D long enough. However, it quickly evolved to include sculpting functionalities, creating a new option for 3D artists alongside established tools such as ZBrush and Mudbox. Now, going back to the only 3D sculpting software that actually had a real chance of challenging ZBrush dominance in 3D sculpting as an industry standard software. Of course, I'm talking about Mudbox. The thing is, Mudbox and his company were acquired by Autodesk, which means it had a chance of failing at some point, like many software before it did. And this is exactly what happened. Because after 2012 or 2013, there were little to no updates, I mean new features and tools that were implemented in the software regularly, which meant that ZBrush had officially become the king of 3D sculpting as the only industry 3D sculpting software left standing as a legit choice for professionals and studios. So Mudbox was sent straight to a forgotten corner with only a small loyal user base. And now ZBrush continues to grow and challenged for more than a decade. But the thing is, the team behind it are doing a good job to keep the user satisfied to a certain extent. After the acquisition of Maxon, not many liked how things are heading, especially since they are trying to convert their user base with the perpetual licenses to their subscription-based model, which means you have to pay each year. And this is something not people like. So does it mean that from now on, ZBrush is going downhill? And does that mean that 3D artists are also looking for alternatives like 3D Code or Blender. But this will be a topic for another video. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.